Welcome to our user report of Azul installation in production. We at the Open Telecom Cloud run an Azul instance and would like to share with you um, the experience that we made with uh, setting up, configuring, and doing day-to-day uh, -day operations um, of uh, this continuous integration platform. My name is Nils Magnus, but I'm just kind of the host of the session uh, since I have the pleasure of uh, introducing Artem Goncharov to you, um, who is the main designer and chief architect of our SUA installation uh, at the Open Telecom Cloud. The stage is yours, Artem. Thank you, Niels. So, our report. Well, I'm expecting pretty much everyone who is here right now is pretty clearly understanding CI and CD is a must in every kind of really normal, modern software development process. Bef might be some years before, five years before, there were not so many uh, fitting installations or fitting really options for CI, CD. Nowadays, there are many more of those. You can count on Travis, GitLab, GitHub, uh, CI, uh, and many more. But for our installation, we have actually uh, weighted all the advantages and disadvantages of every possible solution. And since we are downstream OpenStack installation or downstream OpenStack provider and offering some additional services on top of OpenStack, literally it is clear that we are also running some OpenStack and we are having in our development process the more, same requirements as uh, OpenStack has. So we have said Zool is the best fit, simply the best fit for all of our needs. Then we have evaluated basically the co compared how Zool is being used in OpenStack installation with all this huge amount of projects um, and tried to map it to our use case. And we said, get it is cool, but it is way too complex for many of the developers. If we are expecting some of the uh, developers or users of the Open Telecom Cloud to contribute into development of our CLI uh, extensions of the additional Ansible modules or whatsoever. Garrett workflow is too complex for anybody who is not really familiar uh, with OpenStack development style. And on the other hand, GitHub is already there and it is providing the required code review features that Garrett is actually mostly for. So we have said, get it, we will not use. And GitHub, since we are already historically hosting all our source code on the GitHub, is uh, the way for us to go. So we came to our first POC. It was around two or three years ago. Um, and more or less the only working solution back those days or yeah, useful solution was to deploy Zool on a bare VMs, and we have decided to use Windmill for that. The project which is helping to configure components of the Zool using open, uh, Ansible roles. So we deployed one scheduler, Zookeeper cluster, uh, one node sharing node pole builder and launcher one executor, one web instance. Uh, we are publishing our logs to Zool. And we were also able to push some changes to the Zool source code to address some of our needs, like uh, support for security groups and something additionally. Well, after the installation of there, it is time to, to really say whether this is top or flop, whether this is good or not. Well, when you are starting with Zool, I'm pretty much ex expecting that everyone who is trying to do operating of it would enable debugging mode on. Back those days, and as of now, but especially back those days, hackers were not sleeping and they have actually found sensitive data in our logs. So from the GitHub, uh, where we are storing our project config, um, Azul config, uh, there are links to UI of our installation where you can find links to the logs file stored in Swift 
and some of the log files were containing, unfortunately, credentials, and pretty sensitive credentials, so that literally the whole domain was compromised. What you can do in this situation, simply tear down everything and try to reduce the damage. So the installation was gone after probably a couple of months of running. So it was running, it was helping us, but yeah, not that long. After some time trying to decide what should we do next, and due to some organizational issues, this time was a bit long. It took us around nine months before our second attempt was uh, started. We were awaiting options for running an open, uh, OpenShift cluster or Kubernetes, uh, but due to need for having additional efforts for really maintaining of the OpenShift or Kubernetes cluster itself, which is also something yet additional knowledge you need to bring, we have still decided to go uh, to continue with bare metal installation, but this time a bit different. From the overall architecture, you will not see anything new here. Uh, we have three executors compared to first installation. We have three pools where isolated pools where the test VMs are being running so that you, the danger of compromising is somehow reduced. And some facts to the, our second attempt. Our installation is still publicly visible, publicly accessible. We store our source code on GitHub, and we expect that Zool is tightly integrated with it, meaning that log files of the execution runs are still available to everyone. We are doing installation on BRV metals, like I already mentioned, and this time we have decided to, tr to give a try uh, and use Fedora Core OS image, a pretty nice and cool operating system, which gives you a nice opportunity to scale up, scale down, very flexible, everything in containers, so modern, more modern, how can it be? But the issues that we have faced with it pretty much immediately after might be some days, Fedora Core OS is liking random reboots. Not really random. When the Fedora Core OS image, the uh, Fedora Core OS uh, operating system uh, detects that there is update of the image, it fetches update and reboots without asking anybody. Well, while being cool feature of running containerized loads, this is not very cool and Zool doesn't like it. Then the next challenge, everything is inside of containers. Yeah, sure, but what about node, build, node pool builder? This is not really working properly. At least back those days when we were starting with the second try, it was still not possible, especially when, when we are talking about SE enabled, SE Linux enabled images. So node pool builder cannot be properly containerized. Might be today it is different, uh, but back those days it was not. And then back to the issue with reboots, Zookeeper cluster pretty much dies after each reboot. If you have a cluster of three instances and two of them are just rebooting to install updates, your cluster is gone. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so we were actually forced to move some of the loads and some of the components to the regular uh, operating system, uh, operating systems like uh, either CentOS or regular Fedora installation. So basically we have moved Zookeeper cluster, uh, node pool and Zool scheduler to those proper operating systems. Uh, everything else remains as of now on Fedora Core OS. Everything is running in containers. Well, as I mentioned already, node pool builder, pretty much everything with some exception. And containers we are using rootless, rootful, depending on what exactly. So we are using this complete wildness of uh, what Podman under Fedora Core OS gives to us. In second, for the second installation, our GitHub Zool application resurrected. We have packed it with new keys, uh, connected it with Zool. Um, in the meanwhile, GitHub itself improved a bit with regard to how it handles uh, privileges and permissions. So what was previously uh, 
criticized by many is that being an admin in GitHub, you can literally do everything by passing Zool completely. And since then, since our first installation, at least some parts here were improved. And in, in one ear, in some areas, you can really enforce that even as an admin, you cannot overrule Zool. Um, and then very important thing to mention, we, we are running lots of functional tests against our cloud. We are developing lots of publicly uh, of uh, public oriented tools like uh, Terraform driver, which is packed with uh, support for our additional services, our own um, additional Ansible modules, our extensions to the OpenStack SDK, CLI and so on and so on. So we would like to deliver good quality of the software. Therefore, we are in need to run a real functional tests in the real cloud and this still being publicly visible. So security is still there and need to be treated carefully. Some facts about our workflow. The workflow is nothing really very weird. It is pretty much following the regular recommendations of the Zool installation uh, documentation. So we are enforcing that every project managed by Zool is having branch protection. Otherwise, Zool simply ignores you. Check pipeline must pass. Otherwise, the change the pull request will not be merged. Code review is also enforced include admins option is also on to at least help us exactly the thing that I mentioned um, to help us avoid that with admin privileges, you can merge pull requests really without tests passing. And Zool application itself is also allowed to write a bit annoying thing. Uh, considering the fact that you grant already to the Zool application write permissions in the project or in the installation, but still you need to explicitly allow it to write into the protected branch. Well, we are using a pretty new uh, feature of GitHub draft pull requests, which are in our case, some kind like helping us to identify work in progress pull requests. And in some cases, uh, later on uh, that in details, uh, covering partially workflow functionality of the Garrett. Check pipeline is pretty much as usual. We are also having cross project dependencies and using depends on feature really very heavily. Um, and then we are having our post review pipeline check post. We were forced to introduce this pipeline since, uh, yeah, Zool is treating secrets in a bit different way compared to all the other CIs. And it enforces you if you would like to use secrets in your job, this job must be uh, must be reviewed before it is executed by somebody. So since we would like really to run those functional tests uh, for our projects before we try to merge them, we were forced to introduce this pipeline. And together with draft pull requests, uh, we are here relying on the pull request approval, giving kind of meta approval uh, and still having a draft pull request. And this gives us possibility really to run those tests before, you know, before merging. And the gating is implemented by tagging pull requests with a merge label, pretty much standard way, how you expect it to be. And we can actually look to the limitations and problems uh, in detail that uh, we have faced with this type of installation. And those are exactly the things that we would like to discuss with the community. Maybe somebody is also experiencing the same problems. So again, with gating and using label gate as a trigger for merging, uh, with Zool, there is no possibility to limit who can do really that. In, in Gerrit, you have uh, real possibilities to limit who can trigger a uh, workflow. In GitHub, unfortunately, it is not possible. And actually, everyone who is having more than read permissions in the project is able to manage labels. This means it is pretty hard to isolate that. Admin maintainers, users with admin or maintainer privileges in the project, they are still able to merge pull requests by passing Zool. So yeah, while we are enforcing that 
check pipeline is passing, we are still able to bypass really gating here. And this is a challenge what we were not really able to properly address as of now, with the exception that we have, we are trying to give only maximum right permissions to every users uh, in the project, and that we are using more or less isolated uh, administrators for managing their privileges properly. Managing manually hundred over hundred projects in GitHub. Well. We are currently having two organizations in GitHub and uh, Zool is taking care of more than 50 projects as of now. This means that for all of those 50 plus projects, you need to configure all the branch protections properly. You need to verify that the user accesses are done properly. And manually doing that is what we are having as of now is becoming really a challenge and we are trying to come up with some automation, but this automation is only possible if Zool, whether this automation is triggered by Zool or not, is then having real kind of like really super admin privileges in GitHub, what is already a security relevant issue, what might be not very nice. The issue what we were also experiencing um having from time to time is that Zool doesn't respect or was not respecting back those days and as far as i know there is a work in progress uh, towards fixing that uh, Zool was not respecting code review requirements so yeah in github we can configure that code review is required but Zool itself is not really looking what exactly is required whether there is more than one code review is uh, expected or whether code owner review so basically from a special uh, from somebody special is required so basically zool is triggering is trying to gate trying to merge a change but it fails means zool is consuming resources without being really able to do the merge so from this uh, security point of view everything is clear but it's really a resource waste Single maintainer or contributor in the projects. Well, while in Garrett, with Garrett, it is possible in GitHub as, a, as an owner of the pull request, you cannot review your own uh, pull request. This means that if you are the only contributor, the only maintainer of the project with Zool, this particular Zool workflow, you would not be able to merge a single change into your project. This is not good. Um, but I don't see as of now any workaround, any proper workarounds on that. Then the challenge we see there is no easy way to trigger or retrigger jobs from other pipelines like periodic pipelines uh, or promote pipelines without involving admin. Uh, while be while using GitHub heavily, we are addressing regular developers who are not necessarily having deep Zool understanding means giving them, involving them in Zool administration is not really a proper way. Or triggering permanently Zool uh, administrator to just retrigger a job is also not something good. There are definitely ways how to, uh, possibilities with writing your own admin UI um for for those purposes or really using jvt but this is still not a very nice concept this is still requiring understanding of zool internals or at least deeper understanding of the zool that you cannot expect from a regular qa guy who is responsible for having periodically uh, jobs running tests running and the next challenge what we have is um, the secrets handling in Zool versus the one, the, the concept how you have it in Travis and GitHub in uh, everywhere else in all the other CIs is pretty much different. And we are really having challenges explaining people why this is important and why we are requiring them to do some workarounds workarounds or to, to change their regular workflow of the develop of their development just to achieve this security so while definitely something required for the security but it sometimes really makes life com uh, complicated 
what we have next separation of logs with sensitive data have i already mentioned we are running functional tests against real cloud and running functional tests meaning you are heading in in uh, you are playing with real accounts while using secrets is helping definitely there are some way there are uh, places where you cannot really do it in any other safe way and those credentials still might leak so we need to work on the way how really to distinguish whether logs of the run should be treated in a separate way and not publicly should not become publicly available we are having also issue with direct continuous delivery scope or actually with lack of those while Zool is running Ansible and Ansible is able to do everything, it is still not very easy to use Zool for continuous deployment, uh, continuous delivery with the help of Ansible. Inventory is there, but you cannot really do that much with it. So continuous delivery is possible, but not in the way how we would like it to be. Lack of Ansible collection support, I guess there is a work uh, with regard to that, but at least as of now there is no. We observe also from time to time periodic losing jobs and uh, that Zool is really looping in, in retries of individual jobs or actually for all of the jobs and we are forced to reset completely to, to restart all the processes, which is not good. Unfortunately, we had not enough time to really go deeper in details on that. And then, as I said already, Fedora Core OS is coming with Podman, means we are using Podman for all of our containers and we are getting all the problems of Podman, like periodic crashing, like ports being not bound, like problems with overlay FS and so on and so on. But yeah, we try to overcome that. Future plans of our installation at least migrate some parts when not everything onto the OpenShift cluster. Uh, we are not clear as of now with the way how to, uh, which project to use for that, whether we would like to use some existing projects or whether we would like uh, to come up with our own solution. Uh, but this is a clear direction for us. At least also start running some jobs in OpenShift cluster, not running, not spinning VMs for that and definitely do more of the continuous delivery with Zool. So as I said, we are doing already some parts with continuous delivery, like publishing our documentation somewhere on some web servers or whatsoever, but we would like definitely to do more. And yeah, this is all with regard to how we, what, I, what is our experience with Zool installation. Well, thank you a lot, um, Artem, for your brief overview of all the details um, and uh, well we are open now for question and answers if uh, time permits and uh, uh, please uh, uh, connect to the um, to the conference system here uh, ask your question or get in touch uh, with us directly um, on the last slide we have uh, our contact details as well um, last thing uh, in this session I'd like to point out is our OpenStack scavenger hunt, uh, uh, easy um, treasure hunt. Uh, there are a few questions to uh, be answered uh, on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of OpenStack itself. We uh, um, do a raffle of a photo drone, um, so some nice nerd gadgets to win and if you're interested there is the um, url for the link for that but that said thank you very much and uh, we're looking for feedback comments any uh, questions whatever yeah thank you thank very you. much and bye bye bye